Why won't the Ironclad own up to his mistakes? He's got a blame barrier. Oh, once again, I don't like seeing this formation. This is maybe one in three, one in four, feels like. Ugh. Hexaghost, at least. Ooh. Wish we had a gold option here. I guess common relic is fine. We need something that provides some amount of strength. The only thing we really can't afford with a formation like this is to take a starting bonus that makes us weaker. For example, losing all of my money to turn two strikes into two, let's say, war cries uh, would be a really, really, really bad idea here. Now, if it turns into good cards, that's excellent, but um, this could low roll and kill us very quickly. Remove a card or a random common relic, better yet, is providing some kind of almost assured guaranteed value and definitely can't hurt you in the same way that a transform or a boss swap could. I think it's just too risky to go boss swap or transform two here with a formation like this. Uh, it, it might be the best option, but there's no way to know that for sure. So I'm leaning common relic. Was 20 wins, wins on Ironclad pick because it's a round number, my rotating record, or would be a new record for Ironclad? Kind of all of the above, really. I ultimately decided to make that the goal for all four characters, even though it's nigh impossible to do on Defect and maybe arguably too easy on Watcher. We've already done it on Watcher in the past, uh, unlike the other characters. But I wanted them all to be the same, so I settled on 20. I will not master the water. Let's try Is it ever transformed to defends? That has um, a less chance of low rolling than transform two strikes, but could still be really bad. For example, we could transform two defends into two barricades, as an example, and we're at a considerable disadvantage then. And, and again, we also lose the option, crucially, to go to an early shop to buy a potion which is what I really don't like about it. Not having that gold removes the, the kind of safe pick here. Probably we should start at this node, and then we can path shop or not, depending on whether we get a potion from the first fight. Let's get a common relic. <clears throat> Dream catchers. Definitely not the common relic I wanted, but okay. I could definitely see that getting some use here. <clears throat> we never start on the far left, right? No, that's suicide. Oddity says, I transformed two recently and got two corruptions. Yeah, that can happen. Would I take transform to two defends if it didn't have the, the drawback? If it was lose max health, I would be a lot more likely to take a transform two here. Because then one of the worst case scenarios, right? Let's say you transform into two miserable cards. You can at least remove one of them at the shop with that 75 gold. But if you start down the uh, 99 gold, that's not even an option. All right, no questions here on turn one. And then on turn two, we want to defend one time. So next turn, we either draw lethal or we take only one more damage. So we should be up four or five hit points in this fight. Get 11 bucks, no potion but I am perfectly okay with an early Reckless Charge. Reckless Charge deals seven damage for zero cost. Very hard to do for a clad is to do damage for free and puts a status into the draw pile, but it's an exhausting status. So it's not as bad as Wild Strike is in longer fights. Definitely not strong enough to make me go towards the Burning Elite here. So we're gonna dip into this shop and consider what our options are there. Ah. Pommel Strike at 25 gold is excellent. We can do Pommel Strike and a card remove, or Pommel Strike and Shrug It Off. 
which is a perfectly cromulent start to a deck. And again, if you, if you lose the 99 gold as your starting option, you cannot do anything here at this shop. Definitely would buy this pommel. We could afford a dupe pot, or a card remove, or a card. Currently, we don't really have anything that's that good to duplicate. We'd be duplicating Bash for 12 damage and more Vuln, realistically. That's kind of weak. It's not a good potion. Currently, I'm planning on taking this route. That does make Cleave a little bit better. As a purchase. Cleave is okay here. Long-term striker move is much happier, but doesn't help us much here in Act 1, which is the current concern. Yeah, it really hurts to spend 55 gold on Cleave, though. Do I go to the cinema often? I do not become much more a fan of home theater these days. The main reasoning to why not Shrug would be for the Elite coming up, but I suppose Shrug is really good for these uh, intermediary fights. It's definitely a good term in the, the medium duration. The, the intermediate future, rather. Congrats on the first A20 heart win, Aiden for Red Collapse. Silent boss swap into Wrist Blade is a cool way to do that. Let's do Shrug. Ah. Buying Shrug Pommel at a shop feels pretty good overall, I think. The little guy. It's a current guaranteed two defends. We can do eighteen. So it depends on what the pommel strike draws, I guess. If it draws an attack card, we can kill. If it doesn't. won't be able to. And I have to play the Reckless Charge to make that true. So, let's do it. Worst case scenario, we block twice, take four, heal to full anyway. So, I guess it doesn't matter, really. But we do get the immediate kill, which is kind of cool. Card draw. This is a perfectly fine time to take either a Twin Strike for some more upfront immediate damage, or the Metallicize. Excuse me. Or the Metallicize here, which will provide uh, three block per turn. I definitely think Metallicize has its best utility in the early game, providing a little bit of passive block that can really help out for key hallway and elite fights. I don't usually consider Thunderclap in the early game. I don't find it good enough. Metallicize can help a lot against the Three Sentries and Lagavulin. Twin Strike is better against Gremlin Knob. We get two more card rewards before the fire. I think Metallicize is pretty good here, actually, and I haven't taken it in a while, so let's do it. Grab that secondary block card. My recommendation is to stick to one metallicize at most. Any more feels way too awkward in the late game of Spire. We want to play the metallicize. Question is, do we ever bash or is it strike them each once? We'd have to draw two attacks to kill. Pommel Strike is still six, even when weakened, actually. This is fine.
And actually, with the Metellicize, I don't hate Iron Wave as a uh, another block source here. That gives us consistent defense that will allow us to edge out an advantage against pretty much any foe. I would never take a Wild Strike here. I just I don't like the card very much. How do I pick between question marks versus fights before an elite? Uh, especially early game like this, you definitely want combats. Going into an elite fight, you want four or five added cards to the starter deck, and you want ideally two potions. So you want to take as many fights as it takes to get those things, and sometimes it's a lot of fights you need. In Act 2 and 3, the evaluation of combat or event room is a little harder to do. But Act 1, it's all about those early fights to get the deck started. Or you'll file, fall far too quickly behind. Should be able to go long in this fight. We have pretty consistent block, thanks to Metellicize here. Even this attack, we can block. Okay, time to split, I suppose. Not a very good split, but uh, it's time. Both the same. Fen Strike. Strike Strike won't kill next turn, though. If I bash, we bring it to... Yes, kill with Strike Strike. So maybe I should bash, take some damage here. Seems like we need to finish one of them as quickly as we can. Let's do it. Here's a turn where Iron Wave is doing good work. Very tough call here. With the Elite coming up, I think we need the damage. So, Uppercut versus Dark Embrace. I have been a big fan of the early Dark Embrace. It definitely pays off long term. Almost inevitably and is a real powerhouse of a card for this character. That said, Uppercut might be an immediate survival necessity. It's also a very good attack card in general. Wire Breathe Tube, Eat Tube, and Drink Tube, all the same tube. Ridiculous. Headbutt not even getting considered here. Normally I really like this card, but it's in uh, the presence of graders. Uppercut would immediately become our upgrade going into the Elite. It even applies vulnerable to sentries, busting through their artifact with the weak effect. That's pretty good. So even against sentries, Uppercut does really good work. And is worth its weight as a two-cost card. 
Main reason to take Dark Embrace would be to be able to get combo pieces for the later game. It does provide draw with the Reckless Charge, but this effect is pretty insignificant currently. We're still also not able to kill the Act Boss with the current damage output. So a card like Uppercut can really help with that too. Let's take the Uppercut and upgrade it. As much as I do like Dark Embrace. Sneko Oil could be quite useful against um, our Elite, as it can create zero cost cards. It's a bit weird though. So, onwards we go. It is a Lagavulin. Had I known we're facing that, yeah, uppercut's probably what I would still take. Gonna try to get Metallicize in play here, or otherwise just wake up by playing the uppercut. Or both, maybe. Or both. We can do Metallicize, uppercut, reckless charge. Next turn looks kind of garbage. Maybe I'll use the oil. Shrug into Bash is actually just fine. We keep the Vulnerable up for uh, quite a while. And we're only taking four here. How indeed did Zeknar get 27 wins on Silent? I encourage you all to, to watch Zeknar um, when he streams, which is pretty regularly these days. He's a very, very talented Spire player. And has set some incredible records for the game. Zeknar is just built different. Okay, we're getting Iron Wave on the Sleep turn. This would be a great turn to draw Uppercut, so this looks like a very good Sneko Oil to me. If we play the Reckless Charge and then Sneko Oil, I guess we're not guaranteed to draw the Uppercut. Technically, but we're very likely to. If I Sneko Oil before playing Reckless Charge, we can guarantee it, but probably worth just playing the Charge first. Let's do it. Okay, well. Fair enough, I suppose. We did talk about that possibility. Now I can't even use the last energy, unfortunately. Definitely got egg on my face here. But we do have a zero cost strike in our hand, and that helps a bit. See, it's fine. It is fine, right? We do 9 plus 6. That is exactly 15. Easy peasy. Get a bag of marbles. One Vuln on turn 1. We can stack stuff with that. That's great. Um, Here's a question. Do I need Rampage to assure a way to get past Hexaghost? As we get closer and closer to Hexaghost with no damage scaling being provided, any card that can potentially solve that fight becomes much more attractive, because I, I do... I do know the circumstances under which one loses to this boss, and I do see them starting to form here. It's very likely we can find another better card than this later in the same act, but we don't have that many card rewards left. We only get to play the Rampage three or maybe four times in the Hexagost fight, but it does add just enough damage, I think, to get us over the edge. Certainly, you can at least all agree that taking Rampage puts us in a better situation versus Hexaghost than not taking Rampage here. Although one could argue for Seversoul, perhaps, and I would consider that valid. Seversoul is acceptable here. Had we the Dark Embrace, I think it'd even be good. It's a two-cost attack. We can upgrade it for plus six additional damage. And it does give us a way to exhaust status cards. 
So the only way I don't take Rampage here, I guess is what I'm saying, is that you convince me that Sever Soul is better at killing Hexagos, specifically. I would never skip or shrug here because of the aforementioned problem. And currently no potions. We're likely to get some. And maybe the potion can solve the fight if we get, like, a cultist potion. Severusol can work much, much better in the late game. That is my problem, though, is that we can't play Severusol and Uppercut on the same turn, or Severusol and Bash in the same turn. We can do that with Rampage. So I think I'm going to genuinely take this Rampage. Just as a, a what-if against Hexaghost here. And we're going to go here. Might go two more combats, might take this event. Two more combats could be two more potions, so that's a good reason to take two combats. Jimmy Henrik, thanks for, for the prime sub and the two years of sub ports. Early Singing Bowl can be quite good, allowing us to skip card awards to gain max HP. Hmm. I guess we Metallicize Defend Defend. I guess so. Taking the damage from the Golden Idol I think would have been too greedy. Currently our priority is get through the next Elite Fight, and we're going to want some health for that. Definitely. Definitely going to want some help with that. This is 19. This is better. Get an Essence of Steel. I could have had a Dark Embrace. I guess a second uppercut isn't the worst thing in the world. The double uppercut. Exclam Mods has a list of all the mods we use. Here's a mouse over so you can see the full list as well. Could have had a V8. Is Perfected Strike more damage? Slightly. It's more damage than Uppercut is. Yes. I want a second Uppercut. This is more consistent, weakened, and vulnerable, which I value quite a bit, and means we can easily get rid of Bash from the deck. Uh, I am going to take more combats, though. We want more Curve Rewards here still. As far as I'm concerned. We've added so much already. Can't stop, won't stop. Punch. I will add as many cards as it takes to kill Hexaghost, I guess. Which could be all of them. All of the cards. One off, huh? Still at full, like, full HP here. Yeah, could have taken the damage from the gold medal. Burning Pact. Burning Pact I like quite a bit. Letting us exhaust a card and draw more cards. Adds more card draw to the deck. And gives us the ability to boil the deck down to a particular card or subset of cards. Works well with the Rampage um, for the Hexaghost fight, or can just get rid of Burns and Hexaghost, either way. Very disappointing Act 1 potions. That's okay. Let's see how our Elite goes. Certainly with full HP, we run into this fight, which is a Gremlin Knob, and then we punch him in the nose, and we strike him in the nose, too. Wait, he doesn't have a nose. Hold on. Gremlin Knob, where's your nose? Oh, 
what could have been with either Bash or Uppercut. Oh well. We had plenty of health that we don't need, so this is fine. This is the situation that made me not want to lose current health from Golden Idol. Just bop him with the uppercut. Might as well play defense. Saves one hit point. Sure. And we get a Paper Frog. Okay, now I think we're beating Hexaghost. I don't think we were until this moment. Um, I'm also totally justified in my double uppercut now for the additional bonus damage. Do I ever take a power through? It's not good for Hexaghost, but it is good for other fights. I can also just take two max health. Maybe that's better here. If I'm not wanting it for Hexaghost, I should probably just take two max health. We could take a Perfected Strike. I don't think we need it. I think our Rampage will kill Hexaghost for us. Actually, is that true? Hold on. It's a pretty garbage Perfected Strike. But I still really don't like our damage that much. We're just playing Uppercut for 22 or whatever. With 20 cards in the deck, realistically, we draw Rampage three times, maybe. So, actually, I think we are short on damage. Still, somehow. Guess I'll take Perfected Strike, then. And we can upgrade it. We do get one more card reward. Did we take Rampage? Yes, because we're absolutely terrified of the boss. <laughs> Basically. If I take Perfected Strike, I think that becomes the upgrade. Although Uppercut Upgrade is pretty good. Strikes are only going to deal 10. It's not Shrug, that's for sure. Would Bash be our first remove? Definitely. Definitely. We upgrade the other uppercut, we remove Bash. I hate that I'm doing that. Potion luck has been solidly miserable. Truly miserable. Part of the reason we're still behind, actually, is that our um, our upgrades have been going into statuses, not into direct damage. So we actually don't have that much output. Even though it feels like we ought to. Hmm. Uppercut, take six, or shrug, kill one of the little ones. Let's kill one of the little ones here. You. Take four. Not a terrible time for Essence of Steel, but we might want to lose a bit of health before Hexaghost anyway. Let's see. 16 incoming. We've got 8 block. So taking 8 currently. We can kill one of the medium ones. Take 10. 10 is more than 8. Getting Metallicize down is good as well. So for Hexaghost, we, generally speaking, you have to do 264 damage in nine turns. That's your threshold to aim for, you can call it. And that's accounting for having a couple of burns in the deck after the first three turns, which further complicates matters quite a bit. Okay, that kind of helps, but I have constant Vuln anyway. Flex is actually okay. Huh. Flex is okay here. If I want to take a Flex. We could also skip this and just upgrade Perfected Strike. That's probably better. That way I have two more max health and one less card. I 
can hypothesize about using Rupture to gain strength from burns, but you're already talking about not playing Metallicize in that case. It's not worth it. Yeah, Hexa feels easy until you're dead, and then Hexa does not feel easy. You have to give lots of respect to Hexaghost, or you will die to Hexaghost sometimes. I think I'm gonna skip the uh, skip the card and upgrade Perfected Strike. Feels kind of embarrassing to do this. I like it more than upgrade Rampage, at least. So Perfected Strike with Voln is 47 damage. This will be enough. There's my uppercuts, eh? Block eight, take a bunch. Good burning pack or pummel strike? Better to pummel strike here. Rampage. Okay, now I have to play Rampage. So we'll go Metallicize Rampage, take a ton. We should be pretty safe after that. The uppercuts and the Metallicize will keep us protected. I don't think it's time to use Fear Potion. We're only doing eight more with Rampage. We could have eked a little bit more damage here, but realistically, we're just going to uppercut next turn. I think we're fine. Hello? Okay, maybe I lied. That's garbage. Although, the Reckless Charge actually lets me shrug without reshuffling. That's good. All right, I am going to use this potion. I'm now scared. We want a little bit of damage here, makes the Voln last longer, and we get the bonus damage on the Uppercut next turn, too. Next turn's going to be Uppercut Shrug. Hopefully. Good. Draw the Dazed, play the Uppercuts. We take nothing. We get rid of some garbage. You can see we're already starting to run low on time here. It's a bit concerning. So, realistically, we get to draw all of the things in the draw pile one time. So Rampage is only actually hitting for 13 here. Perfected Strike's gonna have to do a lot of work. One thing's for sure, we uppercut again. I think we're all in on damage here. We're only taking one currently anyway. If I'm really panicking, we can use the Essence of Steel now to try to get a little bit more HP. But this is really all about the damage, so I, I don't think we care about the uh, Metallicize block or whatever. Okay, almost strike uppercut, hopefully. Let's see what this draws, though. Perfected strike. Now we have to play this. So that means no... no weakened for an Inferno here. We just have to kill with the two draws. Hopefully this is enough damage. I'm actually not sure. We can do math right now if we want to. So. Next turn, we draw Strike Strike, Iron Wave, Reckless Charge. This turn we have Strike Strike, Rampage. We have Voln for all of it. There's nothing to think about on this turn, right? We have Strike Strike and Rampage. This does 22, which is half, and then yes, we kill. Okay, so yeah, we're fine. But I would like just like to point out here, though, that we are so freaking close to not having enough damage that I'm pretty sure Rampage is making the difference here. Between failure and success. It's pretty crazy. We definitely needed the P-Strike, right? Without... Without investing as much in damage as we did, we're completely screwed. I just wish I had a Dark Embrace, you know? Although, we also do have one more turn, technically. Wasn't as close as I feared, I guess. Either way, we make it out of the act, which is the important bit. That's always the current goal in a Slay the Spire run. 
Hmm, demon form is back. Kind of a bad demon form, though. Hmm. Two weighty cards that could be useful later on. If only I knew what our boss relic was going to be. It's actually not a bad berserk, huh? This deck is very energy hungry. We have draw aplenty currently. High cost cards aplenty. How the heck do I get this in play though? Hmm. Feels like it'll be a garbage card way too often. I'm leaning towards two hit points here, personally. Hmm. Astrolabe, Coffee Dripper, Empty Cage. Four energy is definitely welcome via Coffee Dripper. Wouldn't exactly call this Seeing Bowl Sustain, but it does allow us to gain more health mid-act, so that's kind of nice. Here in Act 2, we definitely want immediate output of all kinds. That's part of why we skipped Barricade. It's a nice card for gaining... Uh, retaining block from turn to turn in the late game, but early game we just want to be able to play Uppercut, Perfect Strike, and freaking kill something. Like a slaver. So, probably just take the Dripper here. Hey, happy to hear you're hooked on uh, Cobalt Core. We might do some more of that later. I'm not sure what I'll play after uh, Spire today. Haven't decided yet. If I was to Astrolabe cards, yeah, probably Bash, Strike, Defend sounds about right. Sounds about right. Okay, there's one early shop available, one mid shop, one late shop. Cute. Don't mind going shop into early ish elite here. gonna be the only way reasonable way to get two elites this act. Fighting only one elite is kind of reasonable with Coffee Dripper, but not desirable. Our act boss is Champ. So we're desiring a scaling mechanism to get past Champ. I hope it's a dual wield, personally. Still stuck in a Woken Umbra Purgatory. Oh no. Good luck, Dr. Noodles. Good luck. I guess you could also consider fire into this elite, into this shop. But again, you're only fighting one elite. I don't know. Yeah, uh, sorry, dual wield to dual wield metallicize to be champ, which, uh, if you've not seen before, is hilarious. Hmm, I wonder if we just want to deal 10 more. This is really all about killing before turn three, this fight. I'm gonna skip Metallicize here. Correct, I think. Come on, Perfected Strike. One time. Maybe still good enough. We deal 17, 7, 7, 9. Which is... Forty, forty. It's forty. Bummer. Any of these three over a strike would have done it here. So either I can take some damage or I can use the energy potion. I guess I'm happy spending the energy potion. Coffee dripper and all that. Hit points are pretty valuable. Headbutt is here. Mm. Nah. Nah. K 
can do things with Rampage, but I say nay. Ooh, do we upgrade all strikes and defense? With the Paper Frog, the strikes being upgraded is kind of a huge deal. What's, um, so currently strike is 10 damage with Paper Frog, 9 times 1.75 is 15. So these are plus 5 on the strikes when upgraded uh, on, a, on a Volum target, which is pretty much all the time. That's a, yeah, that's a really big upgrade. We have all of our starter cards still, and our next remove is going to be Bash, so we keep these upgrades for a long time as well. Yeah, let's upgrade Strikes and Defense. It's been a while since we've done this. Been more of a remove monkey lately. Ah, but here's an enemy who can counter some of our shenanigans. This artifact charging will make them... Uppercut resistant. The second uppercut works. Chip down into the hit points right now, though. Let's do that. I wanna get, again, this fight's all about killing by turn three, so I think we focus on the damage here. Perfected Strike is perfect for the situation. How often do we fail to block, uh, to deal 16? Very... It's Bash Strike, Uppercut Iron Wave, Uppercut Uppercut, Uppercut Strike. And if we fail to draw that, we can do Shrug and a lot of blocks. So I think we're fine here. Uppercut Strike. Yeah, that's a bloodletting for me. I know we have um, Coffee Dripper, but being able to trade a little bit of health for energy is such a valuable thing on Clad. This is I much prefer this card over, say, Berserk, in part because you get the energy immediately. Here it lets us play two cost cards after drawing into them with a Burning Pact or Pommel Strike and has a few other applications as well. Yeah, currently we're playing a no rare Ironclad deck. We did not take our rare from the boss. We have not seen a rare that we wanted yet. But maybe that's about to change. With second perfected strike. Oh, hello, Brimstone. Hmm. Brimstone is pretty absurd here, actually. Looks like I'm going to be taking it. Wish I hadn't skipped that earlier, Heavy Blade. I'm probably going to buy this one now. Yeah, Brimstone gives us the scaling the deck missed the first time around. Brimstone says, uh, at the start of your turn, gain two strength. All enemies gain one strength. A couple reasons we want that. One, it's automatic scaling. It's a way to beat Champ, which we currently don't have. So that alone makes it worth it. Very scary with the Coffee Dripper, it's true though. Very scary. And Heart will also be scary later on. But, we're going to be able to take that 2 strength per turn to us and multiply it by 1.75 with our Paper Frog. So strength is, is very good. I'm Basically all of our attacks are already 2 times strength scaling. Bandage Up is a little tempting. True Grit is a little tempting. Bash remove is probably going to happen here. Let's remove the bash. Do I want to buy a heavy blade? I guess probably not, huh? Flex potion into the elite looks good, though. This is a nice insurance policy. This potion's kind of crap, so I don't mind discarding it or using it next fight. Let's do that. Wait, am I going to go burning elite? No, we're going to go this way, right? This is stupid. This is less stupid. I still want the Flex Potion, though. Okay, let's do that. Sweater Kittens, thanks for the Prime sub and the 10 months of support. Thank you both for not attacking me, turn one. Look at this damage. 19 damage strikes on turn one. That's now what we have. Huh. 
Help. Great use for the Essence of Steel. Punch. Become dead. We do get a potion, so yeah, that was all the Essence of Steel was ever going to do. Just get the upgraded True Grit after not buying one in the shop. That feels really good. Nine block and exhaust is nice. Pommel Strike's also okay here for some damage and some draw, but I do want some better block options for sure. Am I sure I don't want to go for the Burning Elite here? Seems like a really good opportunity. With these potions... Although we could, it's true, we could take a bunch of damage and then I can't heal it back, huh? Hmm. That would be pretty bad. We also miss out on an upgrade that could go to Pommel Strike or Burning Pact. We do have to kill a Burning Elite at some point anyway. Not worried about AoE for Slavers. We can, we can, Slavers of any variety are just instantly dead to this deck. I think Book is probably the only thing that could even threaten us a little bit here. And I might even be able to kill Book on turn one. I'm not kidding. Depends on what the potions are. The attack potion is. But I can't do that in two fights back to back, right? Brimstone makes us crazy strong. Do want more relics too. We're gonna need our late game to be very good. Okay, let's. You know what? I'm gonna do it. It's a plus strength book of stabbing. They're all scared. Or are they? There's no need to be afraid. You're not, Twitchat. Change the number of cards in my hand. So this would only be two, right? Would be worth it. And the Perfected Strike boosts the other Perfected Strike, too. Yeah, please hold panicking until you see the Book of Stabbing's health at the end of this turn. <laughs> just wait. Just wait. Uh, I guess I just need to do math real quick. This will be 9 by 2. This will be... We have 8 strikes, including itself. So that'll be 22. Plus 2, 24. And that boosts this thing, too. So I think we just go Uppercut, Perfected Strike, Perfected Strike. That's going to deal 56 plus 42 plus 26. Yeah, so we bring it down to 50. I don't think I need to use this potion. You still scared, Twitch yet? I'm not. Now we get a shuriken, as well as a lot of money. The emerald key, and either a shrug or two more health. I think I'll take the health.
Call an ambulance, but not from here. Call it for the chosen one. Oh god, the bird. The bird is a terror. Hmm. <laughs> the bird. Alright, maybe kill the bird. I think the bird is too strong. The bird is swooping, even worse. No swooping, bird. Do this. Take a little bit here, become vulnerable, which is definitely spooky. Next turn could be bad. 13 by 2 and we draw garbage. This is bad. That's very bad. A very bad thing that just happens. Take 15. This is a little rough. Get a swift pot, though. That's great. Twin strike is okay. Maybe we should take a headbutt here. Unupgraded cards are really not that attractive. I'd much rather take a pummel. No, let's take max health. Okay, this will be either Slavers or Gremlin Leader. It's Gremlin Leader. That's not ideal, actually. Uh, now we can kill both Gremlins, at least. We'll skip the Metallicize, gain one strength here. Oomph. We'd like to prevent Gremlin Leader from attacking by keeping the gremlins off the field and then do as much damage as we can as quickly as we can to avoid getting destroyed ourselves. Should be able to kill next turn here with a decent draw. We have Swift Potion in case of disaster. Hmm. It's moderately disastrous, but looks like we can just punch here, kill with this draw, finish with Iron Wave. Seems good to me. Brimstone's definitely going to allow us to rack up lots of kills that feels like we shouldn't have been able to get by just destroying things really fast. So, look at that. We took the dangerous path, and on the other end, we have full potions and almost full health. No problem. What about an Exhume? Exhume is useless currently. It might be very important later. We could Exhume something like a Disarm if we find it. Dad joke for the crowd, courtesy of Ugly Wombat. Why did no one hang out with the Wombat? He wasn't cool all uh, enough. Wasn't cool all uh, enough. There we go. No. Refunds. Twitch chat. Boo this man. Or don't. You don't have to. That joke was not top quality. I think I should take this. This can be used later on Impervious. Or other glorious shenanigans. I'm very happy with Gremlin Horn when we kill an enemy. Gain an energy, draw a card. Happy to take another elite now. This is going to be really good in Act 3, especially, allowing us to chain kills together to end fights really fast. And we want to upgrade our card draw. Let's upgrade the Pommel Strike. Oh yeah, I immediately useful. Again, our strikes deal 19 freaking damage, so I can kill one of them immediately. And by one of them, I mean two of them. I can kill two of them immediately. And this is why we took Brimstone, in a nutshell. Brimstone makes us so strong that we can just start 
punching the spire in the face and getting the strongest reward from everything. Um, we have to prepare for the end game, though, where the brimstone is going to punch us back. Let's grab a war cry here. It looks helpful. With a free upgrade. Sure. I think I like the flex pot over the strength pot. They can't use the strength if they're dead. That's right. Book of Stabbing, the rematch. How much damage is Flex Pot here? It seems like it's a lot. We definitely don't want this fight to go on long, just like last time. We're at 50% potion chance. I say we do it. Let's just use this. Hit it four times. We get to multiply that damage bonus by 1.75. And once again, we're down to 50 health after turn one. Pretty strong. Hiya! Get the oddly smooth stone, making our blocks just a little bit blockier. And we're offered a Corruption, which makes the Exhum instantly freaking sweet. Also means Dark Embrace, if we find it later, will be freaking sweet. Or if we can find Feel No Pains, that could be a way to block in the endgame. So all of these things point towards, yes, take the Corruption. 100% take the Corruption. Keep on keeping on. Hmm. Don't need the corruption in this fight, so we should play damage. Guess I'll kill this one first because of Gremlin Horn. It's attacking me next turn. Then it's easy enough to block and attack here. Hopefully we can finish it next turn, or at least block or something. Oh god. Not like an Exuma Defend. Or we can Swift Pot here. Doesn't look like we actually kill, even with uh, all offense, unless I were to Bloodletting, maybe. need that much health for a champ, surely. We have a 40 and 50% chance to get a new potion, so we're very likely to get another potion. I'm going to use the draw pot. I think this worked out quite well. Yeah, we just used the bloodletting and win. Nothing to exhume, surely. comfy with that. Another Pummel Strike is takeable. Dealing damage and drawing is definitely good. We'd prefer some attacks that scale better with our strength stat, though. I think we should just keep taking max health here when presented the option. Hmm. Corruption? I feel like I want to kill the Chosen first this time, but this guy gets strength so fast. don't like my options here. Yeah, now I definitely want to punch the Chosen. That's how I'm feeling. So I want that weekend guaranteed next turn on Chosen. Spire has too many birds. I agree. There we go. 
It's getting the power of Brimstone is just too much. Clothesline Plus is worth vaguely thinking about. Having consistent and reliable access to Weaken will be very important later game in order to shut down enemies' additional strength. But with two uppercuts, I'm not sure I need a clothesline here. Doom Train with the 19 months. And we can just take more health. And I'd prefer a shockwave. I'll take more health. Probably upgrade Burning Pact going to champ. Just more card draw. Okay. Don't plan to use corruption immediately in this fight. Champ does gain strength over time, so our um, duration that we can spend in the fight is limited here. Especially with turns like this happening consistently. And the goal is essentially to rush Champ down pretty much as quickly as we can here. Scaling strength. If we want to dex spot, I think so. the strikes? Is that true? It's not true, I don't think. No, that is true. Put that on top, I guess. Half health per champ is 220. So upon bringing champ below 220, he's going to get very angry with us. Which we're not quite ready to do. We have to do soon, or he's going to kill us. Would not be fun either. Let's lose a defense here. He's getting meaner. Might be the turn we have to bring him below half health. Let me just focus on dealing damage as quickly as we can. With the vulnerable, we do damage pretty effectively here. 22 minus 3, we take 19. That's not too bad. We deal 35 plus 30 more this turn. We deal lots next turn. Tons next turn. We can also exhume strike for more damage right now, or perhaps better yet, exhume war cry. I think it's just Exhumed Strike, though, so I can play it now. Let's kill him. We're not, vulnerable. We're not weak on this turn, nor next turn. That helps, too. 52 damage. Oh, yeah, he's super dead. Blam. Way more damage than we needed. That's the power of the Brimstone. GG, sir. And I am extremely happy with a limit break, which says double your strength. That means it's at least two strength, possibly more. And guess what? We can freaking exhume it. That's a ton of strength. What we're missing now are the ways to really capitalize on that strength. Any multi-hit card or reaper would be really, 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 really welcome. But definitely we take limit break here. As for our boss relic... These are quite some choices. So our options, Velvet Choker, limiting us to six cards per turn for more energy. Although the deck would enjoy more energy, I think that the Corruption and the Gremlin Horn really want us to be able to play lots of cards on our turn. In particular, currently the way I see Reptomancer going is that we play one card to kill each dagger, and then we get a whole bunch of energy back. So this would kind of make that terrible. 
Black Blood, heal for 12 at the end of each fight. Helps us stay full-ish with the Coffee Dripper. That's kind of cool. Not bad, but might be unneeded. Or the Black Star. We get extra Relic from Elites. We did get our green key, so our pathing is more free in Act 3. I'm not really afraid of Reptomancer. Giant Head should be easy. That leaves Nemesis as a potential major problem. Nemesis could definitely ruin our day. But I think it's worth the risk here. Giant Head should be very easy. And this can be three or four additional relics that could help. I think that the Ironclad is probably the best Choker character. Um, I just don't feel like this is a good position for it. Let's take Black Star. Three elites, okay. And we can go to a shop early, which we probably want to do. I don't have to. I do want to. So I'm seeing a path that looks like this currently. We can decide event or combat at the end. That looks okay. Gremlin Horn, take me home, please. 26, 19. Hmm. Can't heal in any way, shape, or form, you say. I see. I see. Hmm. Well, this is definitely a situation where Choker would have been nice. having plus one uh dexterity here. Zoom limit break. But not really. Hmm. Let's see, twenty Three plus nineteen times one point seven five. Fifty six. Fifty six. Damn it. <laughs> it's fifty six. Okay, so strength pot then, yeah. It's a funny bummer. The strunk pot. a lunk. Get to Iron Wave to save some health, too. Okay. That worked out reasonably. Lose another five. We're down ten so far, and one potion. But then we're done. And Darklings is the first fight of Act 2. Well, I've seen a lot worse. Let's just say that. I've, I've lost 40 or 50 to these guys before, so this ain't too bad, all things considered. Especially when they get me a freaking Dark Embrace. This is why we don't take the Velvet Choker. Whenever a card is exhausted, draw one is exactly what the deck wants with Corruption. And it's going to be a major game changer for us. Easy peasy. Oh yeah, and we can bottle the Corruption if I want to. Or I can buy a Frozen Eye. Or I can maybe do both. Although I've said in the past I prefer bottled Dark Embrace, don't I? There's also Heavy Blade. But man, Bottle Dark Embrace, you do need a head start in the boss fights if you're playing with um, Brimstone. So I actually really like this combination of Bottled Dark Embrace plus Frozen Eye. That way we know exactly where the corruption is. Can I also afford the Havoc? That's the really important question. 263 plus 158 plus 29. Yes, I can also afford the Havoc, which is 
freaking awesome. Hell yeah. <laughs> we have to upgrade one of these immediately. Uh, but I can see the draw order. Formal Strike does not draw useful block cards. We do Pummel Strike, Uppercut, Iron Wave. It's not even that good. Hmm. Corruption Defend, Iron Wave. Followed by Mediocrity. I guess that gets a kill, though, yeah? Turn 3, Limit Break, Strike, Strike. Reckless will be sufficient. So, yeah, let's go Corruption. Defend Iron Way. Take 2, and then we should win. Turn we have 12 strength, meaning the strikes deal 36 damage each, which is frankly too much. Yes! That's a really funny series of cards to add to this deck. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Havoc is OP when we know exactly what the top card of the draw pile is, and we have a bottled Dark Embrace. It's just play a card for free, draw one, and you know what the card is, so you can make it Corruption or Uppercut or whatever. That's awesome. Twelve cards, match them to keep them. Five tries, no do-overs. Would you like an Inflame, he says. No. I don't want a Pain either. There could be four Pains, so I'm not going to click on a new card here. Sometimes he does give you two of the same... Oh, my goodness. Heck. Can't risk the normality. Okay, we have one card to find either Heavy Blade or Limit Break. So we've got a one in three here. So Limit Break here, Heavy Blade here. What's it going to be? At least his bottom third. So does Official Turkey. I believe them. That's an inflame. Heavy Blade this year. Good try, though. Good try, though. Second limit break sure would have been nice. Oh, we can get rid of the stinky Metallicize. I'm going to do it. Metallicize does not pull its weight in the late game. We need cards that draw more cards. Or something like that. But Metallicize is no longer cutting it as of having Brimstone, realistically. We definitely need to upgrade the Dark Embrace to be cheaper. This is quite a roller coaster of a run, ain't it? Okay, so we can see corruptions down here. Let's start with Dark Embrace, Burning Pact, Havoc hits Defend, which draws the Sender's Vein. So we draw Corruption next turn. We'll have to bloodletting into doing some stuff. I want limit break next turn, not this turn. Now we gain 7 strength, then we exhume it, then we gain 14 strength. Havoc to play... Hmm. Please strike for free. Hmm. Yeah, play a strike for free. Strike does 100 damage, by the way. <laughs> really? 
Meat on the bone, Mall Bank. We just left a shop, so Mall Bank's good. Good money for Act 4. Feel No Pain Plus. Here we go. It's all coming together. I like Feel No Pain more than I like Pummel. I do like Pummel a lot. But Feel No Pain with this deck now is our late game block solution. We need this Feel No Pain. These jerks again. They're a bit ruder on turn one this time. So it is. So it is. Do I bother dex potioning here? Half chance to get a potion from this fight. We're not likely to get... Stuff anyway. Still 19. I can also attack a lot. That's better in the lead, though. When do you not take corruption on Ironclad? If you just have your starting four defense for skills, that's usually about it for me. Or if you need to play a skill multiple times to, uh, to win many fights is the other time. I think we're okay. Hit this one, as this one is guaranteed to attack next turn. Terrible. Hmm, this is really not good, actually. Currently having plays. Oh no, wait, no, this is good. Never mind, everything is fine. Excellent. Very satisfying kill. And there's the pummel, this time with a plus. Definitely take it. Massive damage, and it says exhaust. Excellent. Definitely getting amazing cards this act. And we're going to gain four more relics as well. Although I cannot take the ornamental fan, which would give us block for three attacks play. we got to take the sapphire key here. But add four more relics, I'm sure something good will happen, right? Next up, Reptomancer. I'm glad it's not Nemesis. And this is why we upgraded to Dark Embrace, so that I could play Dark Embrace Corruption at the same time, if necessary. Let's draw those two cards. Running pack withdrawal. One, two, three, four. Then I can play Bloodletting. Let's do that. Who's the uppercut, unfortunately? This is very strong now. Nineteen damage. Not if I play three attacks first. One, two, a three. Oh, but now you have twenty-two. Get punched for 100 damage, I guess. Nothing to panic about, I guess. Then Chaku, that'll give us more energy, and my Art of War also might, if we don't play any attacks. Third Havoc is genuinely, like, not terrible. I'm also maybe considering armaments here.
Transform a card. Transform one of my strikes, please. Actually, no. Transform Rampage, please. Get out of here, Rampage. You are now a Reckless Charge, which is definitely better. Now it's a zero-cost attack, and it can technically give us four block with the Feel No Pain. We do have to face the Nemesis. Spooky. Next turn looks okay, though. We can Havoc Burning Pack draw quite a bit. Probably should just do as much damage as possible now. Although if I Havoc the Strike, we draw Arma. Then I draw one, two, three, four, five. One, two, one, two, three, four. I can pummel into the True Grit and then get the Feel No Pain down. That won't let me play Corruption, but you know what? It's fine. Drawing deeper into the deck looks good. It is the big hit, which is not unexpected, I suppose. Definitely not good, though. Let's charge again. How did it come to this? So we can Pummel, then Havoc, the Perfected Strike, draw True Grit. Or I can just defend three times. Play True Grit Corruption next turn. I'm just gonna defend three times. Get Art of War that way. It's a fine amount of damage to take. For one more turn. And play Limit Break? I did not play Limit Break. That's right. Okay, well, that's not the draw I want. This'll do. really like the Havoc hitting, the Havoc hitting, the Reckless Charge. That's kind of fun. Er, wait. That was even weirder than I, weirder than I thought it would be. Cool. We get Charon's Ashes when we exhaust a card, deal three damage to every enemy, and a frozen egg to upgrade any future Feel No Pains we get offered. As I've often said before, if you have a corruption in the deck, there is no such thing as too many shrug it offs. I'm wondering if we should take one more combat just for another guaranteed card reward here. The event could be good, but it could also be completely worthless, and I can't stand something that's worthless right now. We do need more help. Let's take a fight. Guaranteed value here. Yeah, it's at minimum two hit points. Well, it could be minus some hit points. Triple Jawworm is pretty easy to kill, thankfully. Hmm. Interesting problem. I guess I'll go Dark Embrace, but no feel, no pain. Gotta hit the one that's gonna attack us next turn. bad against the Awakened One. Although I don't think that matters much. Is Gremlin Horn ever worth buying? I buy it quite a bit. I really like it as an Act 2, Act 3 solve against Reptomancer and Gremlin Leader.
What's our upgrade? Yeah, corruption's a pretty good idea. We should probably upgrade corruption. It's not gonna be cleave. That currently dead to heart? Um, maybe. Maybe dead to heart. Limit break ever an upgrade? Probably not with the corruption, although I could definitely see it doing some very good stuff with an upgrade. Brutality is going to clog our starting hand, which I don't like that much. We really need turn one and turn two to be their best, and this is not helping. I'll take two hit points here. And I like these potions quite a bit. With the strength we get, the attack potions very strong. Yawk RTA, thanks for the 300 bits. Of support. Definitely have to get through the Awaken 1 fight quickly. Looks like it's going to hurt a little bit. We play the pummel early, huh? I might need this for later, actually. No, let's not play it early. Um, we can go uppercut, strike, strike, get a shuriken clock, clock, and an unchu proc, then play. Um, then play Dark Embrace. I think that's worth it. Oh yeah, the ashes are also going to do AOE damage here. That's I forgot about ashes. Seems actually pretty fine. We do take 18 on turn one. I don't love that. But we're lining to be fast and aggressive here. Playing Bloodletting will draw the Field of Pain. If I play Corruption first, anyway. Probably worth it. And then I can play... I'd have to play Exhum. Or I kill the Cultist is the other option. I kill the Cultist. He won't be weak next turn, though. Just take some more damage. Punch the bird. We have to play the corruption either way, though, right? We do. Limit break being on the bottom is actually a really good thing. So I'm thinking we punch here, we corruption here. Then we can bloodletting, draw the field of pain. Meat on the bone is here. Well, we should do damage to cultists. This has to be held. Can't frivolously spend it. 12 by 4, even with weaken, and that's kind of terrifying. Hopefully, I have 12 by 4 just for these defends. Actually, Exhum next turn is even better. It is. Um, 
I guess I want to kill now. If I kill now, I'd probably exhume though. That's fine. Ah, uh, cause uppercut pummel just kills it. Like, <laughs> really kills it. Only took three of the pummel hits. Strongitude get. We get 46 health for Time Eater here, which will hopefully be enough. Time Eater could definitely cause problems, but I see Dark Embrace, Corruption, Feel No Pain in the top 10 cards. We're fine. Totally fine. In fact, I can Havoc, the Pummel Strike, then play Corruption. Although I'm not sure I want to do that. When I could Uppercut. And then Armaments. Havoc would draw Corruption, so we're not doing that. Three more cards. That means playing the Exhum, huh? No, it doesn't. I can play the Warcry. Next turn, I can't tolerate that draw. I so should be going for a kill right now. Phase two for you. Give me the pummel. It does 150 damage. Get obliterated, nerd. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread. It can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of this evil? You ready your strength? Dealing 2157 damage. Have I? Been here before. Ashes has done 99 damage so far. Pretty good. Do I ever upgrade Limit Break? I don't think so. Based on how Limit Break is going, I don't think we want to. If we want to upgrade Shrug, perhaps. Just anything to give me a little bit more block would be helpful. I would rest for 8 hit points if I could, but I can't. Question is, do we have enough? I'm not sure. Really not sure. Really gonna depend on draw order against hearts. A second Dark Embrace could definitely make our life easier, though. I'm not that thrilled with what the shop has, mind you. There's definitely better things we could have found here. Like Disarm. For a second, feel no pain. I might buy True Grit and Armaments just so I have more cards. We're gonna have to be really aggro against hearts. Is this headbutt a consideration? I think it could be. It could do some important things for us. Probably going to remove Perfected Strike. 
But yeah, it's, it's never panache here. Is Trugit more cards with double Dark Embrace? Yes, Trugit is more cards. Sort of. Dramatic Entrance with the bottle Dark Embrace is okay. Doesn't help me in heart though, not really. Thorn's Pot could be nice. I think we're getting more use out of Attack Pot Liquid Memories. Attack Pot really helps in the Elites. We want to kill the Elites as quickly as possible. Ideally, leaving the fight at full health, and Liquid Memories could help a lot there. Or Attack Pot could help a lot. Take a headbutt. This Dramatic Entrance kind of helps in that fight. Only kind of, though. Guess there's not much to lose, huh? Let's do it. It does say exhaust, and it does additional damage with the uh, the things. This is a very good turn one. Wow. It's actually draw two, Gigabrain. And then I draw into Feel No Pain Burning Pact on the wound turn. Although, it gets a little hazy in here. Either way, excellent. Let's see, just Armaments, Dramatic Entrance. Draw these two. At the end of turn, we draw two more. Then we draw one, two, three, two burns. So yeah, we'll get the Havoc and the Headbutt together pretty quick. This looks okay. Don't have, uh, Feel No Pain will be down. Yeah, yeah. Feel No Pain will be down. So we can upgrade the Dramatic Entrance. That's what I'm seeing here. This could also be a time to use the attack potion then. Although, we'll have more strength on a future turn, so let's go with no. They're both going to attack me next turn. It's going to be pretty scary. But we get to do a lot of stuff on our turn, so I think we're going to be okay. At least I sure hope so. Just a casual um, 72. Make sure I tip my hand way away from the end of turn button. So what are we headbutting here? It's gotta be either Shrug or the Bloodletting. Unfortunately, the really valuable stuff is way down in the deck. Have to get lots of block here. Question is, how can we do that? Not very easily is the answer. I think we'll have to use at least one of the potions, though. I prefer not to use the liquid memories if I can avoid it. Does that mean we maybe use the attack potion? Fiend fire here would be amazing. And there's a couple other things we could hit that would be okay. Let's use it now. Yeah. Okay, my life is easy. Good, good talk. So we play the fiend fire, I draw all of the cards. And we get 40 block. I guess we want to hit the shield then, as we're killing shield next turn. I can turn back around with Reckless Charge. Fiend Fire is 99 damage, that's right. We're close to killing here. We might want to play the Pummel. To get the Spire Shield killed right now. Oh, 
Oh yeah, plus 30 from Ashes, that's right. So it's actually 99 plus 30 is 129, which is exactly a kill. So I don't need to do anything. And that's why we kept the attack potion. Good stuff. This fight's over. We're going to go into the heart fight with 82 health. That's what we want to have. That's definitely what we want to have here. I would like to play more attacks for Nunchaku. I shouldn't have played Limit Break. It's fine. I'm out of here. Incense Burner of the Gods. Holy sh shoot. These are amazing rewards. Um, Absolute drops. I think we're now favored to win this fight quite easily. So, Incense Burner provides us intangibility very specifically on turn six of this heart fight. That's the first attack of the second cycle. That means all we have to do is survive the first cycle of the heart. You know what's the best possible potion for surviving the first cycle of the heart? Ancient potion. Well, at least if you're not silent. Because this will prevent us from becoming vulnerable, meaning the heart won't do bonus damage to us in the first part of the fight. My only regret is that there's not a disarm here. But I think it's good enough. Take the two max health here, definitely. Isn't it the second attack of the second cycle? Wait, isn't it? It might be. Turn one is the debuff, two and three are attacks, four is buff, five. Yeah, it is the second attack, you're right. Second attack, that might not be as good then. Definitely wanted this on one. Hmm. A little worrying. Uppercut next turn is good, at least. Hmm, not the greatest turn one. Having the liquid memories here is going to make a big difference. Let's just drink this now. Corruption, please jump the line. Let's see if I... Dark Embrace, Dramatic Entrance. We'll draw this defend. Next turn I get... Just shrug into a Cinder's Bane. And that's like, fill the paint, Dark Embrace. Havoc the Exhume. Oof. Spooky. Definitely need the Dark Embrace in play. I guess it's a question of whether we want the extra energy next turn or not. If I just go defend Dark Embrace, then we can, next turn, shrug, defend, defend, uppercut. That's pretty okay. Not oh, that Corruption's far down. But we can get the Corruption in play on demand here. I'm thinking we keep this Dramatic Entrance for later. It'll draw two later as well. I want the energy next turn so I can triple block and uppercut. Definitely worried here. Brimstone Heart is always scary, of course. That's where those statuses go. Okay, not before Feel No Pain, Dark Embrace is really the only thing that matters. In fact, two of them are after Corruption, although, oh god, turn after Corruption is really scary. Not good that we got the big hit first, we actually wanted multi-hit first. This is definitely a little grim.
think we have just enough health to stay alive, though. For now. Next turn, we're drawing all the block, but next turn is when we don't need it. I have two draws to get to Corruption. Seems very hard to do. Liquid Memories can save our butt, though. So it's definitely Feel No Pain, Dark Embrace. No question here. Problem is, we're also not dealing enough damage. We have to do damage in the early game, too, here. So we have to survive the next... If we use the incense burner, we have to survive one hit. But if it's the multi-attack, I don't think I can, right? Wait, if I Havoc the Slide, I'll draw Burning Pact, True Grit. I can Burning Pact the Strike. Warcry will draw Void when we have no energy. Then I can play Bloodletting? That seems awesome. I can also True Grit here. I don't want to. Actually, we just draw the void naturally. Shrug Trigret? No, we want to do Armaments Trigret Plus. Arma would make Exhume free. I don't want to Exhume any of these cards, although I could Exhume for a bit more block. We'd be much better holding onto the card. Playing Uppercut this turn seems important. Mostly agree. We do get Corruption down in time. I think we're mostly okay here. It'd be nice to do some damage this turn. Oh, I could exhume the bloodletting, do it again. Ooh. Can't exhume bloodletting unless I delete bloodletting. That's not a thing. No, I can't do that. That's right, we still gotta do damage. Hmm. Hopefully play this, that's for sure. Uppercut now, it's week two turns from now. That is kind of massively important. Going critically low on HP if I do that. But I keep all of the skills. I guess they're staying anyway, huh? Hmm. Heart only purges uh, strength down. It will not purge weaken. And I, like I said, having weaken up for two turns from now is really crucial. Yeah, we probably need to play this uppercut. I could liquid memories for that. I think I liquid memories to stay alive. Let me just calculate something. If we face the multi attack, we're gonna have four strength next turn, six, seven strength. So it'll be nine times 15, which is down to six by 15. I can survive that. Pretty sure I can block that much without frail. Okay, so that sounds like we play the uppercut, take the hit, go down to critically low health. Keep the potion for now. Meat on the bone, man. Meat on the bone. Okay, 
Strength before limit break. I do want to get rid of this card with Havoc. Let's do it. Cap damage here is very important. Next turn we've got Havocking the Uppercut. We've got the Shrug happening. Actually, uh, Havocking this Uppercut, actually. We've got Liquid Memories to get True Grit Plus. We're hoping for the big hit next turn. We also have Nunchaku set up. This is about as good as we can hope for, really. That's spooky. Okay, that's not what we wanted, but I don't think we're dead, Twitch Chat. Because I, th I see enough block personally that we can survive this. So I think this is okay. We've established that Havoc gets me the block after the first thing, so I'm gonna Havoc first. Maybe two more here. Armaments, the stuff in my hand, yes. Ta-da! And you're capped, so we're done here. Next turn, we're invulnerable. The turn after that, it's not attacking us, so I think we're there. Who even needs the stinky potion, am I right? Iron Wave, save me! <laughs> Boom. Wham. Bam. Burning Pact is blocked. GG, Twitch chat. So, to answer the question from earlier, would I take Brimstone in the middle of the streak? The answer is yes. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And don't forget to follow on Twitch to watch the content live. Click the link in the description below.